So what we're going to do here is we're going to fill using three scuba tanks. Generally when you have a scuba tank system, you're going to want to have at least two, um, possibly three, in order to have a legitimate refill system where you're going to be able to fill a decent amount of cylinders with it. And the way that you're able to do that is by doing a cascade system. So what we have here is a 3000 PSI tank, another 3000 PSI tank, and a 3500 PSI tank. Uh, we're going to leave this 3500 PSI tank as the last tank because this tank is going to hold the highest pressure for the longest. What we'll do is take our adapter. Um, this is what's called a scuba da paintball adapter. It comes with a secondary gauge. So basically you're able to confirm the pressure that's in the line here is consistent with what's being shown on the cylinder. Hooking these up is relatively simple. Just um, you know, back the threads off so you're able to get the adapter over, um, over the tank here. And then we're just going to make sure that the adapter lines up correctly. Uh, you're going to want to have the threads on the opposite side of the outtake valve. And once we line it up, just tighten it down and it's ready to fill. On some of these adapters, uh, what we have here is the bleed valve that we just push. So we are able to bleed the line by pushing down. Some other adapters have a screw mechanism. So before you fill, you're going to want to make sure if you do have one of those bleed valves that's screwed, that's tightened down in order to have the line hold pressure, that that is tightened down. Now we can hook up our cylinder like that, and it should click in. So once it's in there, we're going to try to fill the cylinder slowly. This will help the cylinder from not getting too hot during the fill. And once you do put a little bit of pressure inside the line, you'll generally hear a click. And that click is the valve, the check valve uh, on the fill port here opening up, allowing pressure to come inside the cylinder. So heard the check valve. Now we're just applying some pressure. Once again, filling slowly will allow the cylinder not to get too hot and it's gonna make it so that you have a much more accurate fill. So we're at about a thousand PSI. Sometimes I will stop the, the pressure from going in any further and just confirm that the amount on our gauge and on the cylinder are the same, which they are at about a thousand pounds here. So now I'm gonna add some more. And this tank's uh, already been used to fill quite a few cylinders, so it won't be able to pressurize the tank fully. Once you have as much pressure in the cylinder as you can get from this tank, in order to get the cylinder off this tank and onto the next one, is you're gonna need to bleed the line. If you don't bleed the line, it's gonna be impossible to get the cylinder off because there's so much pressure here in the line. Push down on the valve, um, bleed valve, or you would unscrew it if you have one of those adapters. So just bleed it like that. See all the pressure's gone down in the line, and but there's still pressure inside the cylinder. And then I'll just pull back here on the connection and the cylinder comes right off. Now we'll move this adapter from this tank to our secondary tank. Making sure it's on there nice and tight and put it on the same way that we did with our first tank. We're hooking up the cylinder just like the last tank as well and we're applying more pressure in. Uh, in this case as well, once we get this line up past the pressure in the tank, you'll hear that click, which is that check valve opening, allowing air to go inside the cylinder. Sometimes if you have a really high pressurized tank, you just need to just barely pull that thing over. This guy is pretty highly pressurized, and so it's filling quite quickly. So I'm just going to wait for a little bit and make sure that pressure inside the tank and, in, uh, and on our valve is, are similar. 
which they are in this case. And so I'm just going to add a little bit more pressure. And we're able to get it into the green. And that is the most pressure I'm going to be able to get out of this tank here. And now I'm just going to bleed the lines so that I can take the cylinder off. All right, now that I've filled the cylinder to the recommended pressure, uh, it is good to wait a little bit for the cylinder to cool down. Right now it is quite warm after that fill. You're just packing a lot of pressure inside this little bottle and so it is naturally going to heat up. And then once it does cool down, that's gonna, it's going to show the actual pressure that's in the bottle. So right now it's actually reading a little bit higher than what's actually in there and so we recommend having the customer wait for five minutes. Um, if you're in a rush, you could always throw it in a snow bank, run a little bit of cold water over it, just to really cool down that cylinder so you know exactly how much pressure is inside the tank. At this point, it's a good idea to go to your fill log and start um, filling out all the information about the fill that you just did. Um, if you're having customers fill out our waiver, it's a good time for them to do that as well while the cylinder's cooling down. Uh, filler initials, good idea to keep track of that just so you know who's doing the fills in case there is an issue with a fill, the date, and the pressure that you filled the cylinder to, and you can confirm that with the customer and then have them sign off on it. So right now looking at the cylinder it looks like it will need a little bit of a top off, but uh, before we're going to do that, we're going to have our customer fill out our waiver, um, shop name, technician name, uh, the date of the fill, serial head number, fill pressure, uh, writing all these things down, having them sign it, and then uh, leave their information down below. And this is just going to help protect your shop from any kind of liability from performing the refill. So now we're just going to do the last step of the refill procedure, which is um, writing down on this handy sticker here are the date of the fill and the pressure. These uh, stickers do not come with our refill center kit, but if you contact us directly, we'd be happy to send you some, uh, as well as a template that you can print out your own stickers as well. I'm going to stick this right under the gauge. We recommend telling your customer to check the pressure not only every day before they head out in the field, but also 14 days after your fill. Uh, roughly two weeks after the fill is a good time to double check, make sure that the pressure is holding and that the fill is good. And they wanna make sure to check this, the pressure at room temperature. If, you, if the cylinder's really cold, it's actually gonna read lower than what the pressure actually is. So uh, there is a note here um, to take the pressure reading at room temperature. Uh, this is just a good thing for both refillers and customers to know if they leave the cylinder in their car overnight and they go to check in the morning before they go out and it looks like it's leaked down, uh, most likely what's happened, the cylinder's just gotten cold. The pressure's actually reading lower than it is. When performing the fill, if you end up having the air, you know, you, you start to pressurize the line and the air comes out of this um, gold coupler here, that pretty much 100% of the time means that the small O-ring on the valve stem was not replaced. Now if you pull the cylinder out once you're done filling and air comes out of the check valve, unfortunately what that means is that the check valve didn't close properly and the only way to uh, remedy that situation is just to call BCA and get a, a replacement. BCA sells a refill center kit that is going to include all the tools and parts needed to do a cylinder fill. Uh, included in the kit is our scuba to paintball adapter and this is essentially uh, an adapter that hooks up to your scuba tank and has the fitting that's used uh, on the fill port of the cylinder. Um, also included is an adapter to make this, uh, this system work with a European style scuba tank. Also included is uh, the tools needed to pull the cylinder apart and replace the o-rings and that's going to be an allen wrench and your dental pick which is very handy for removing that small o-ring off the valve stem. Uh, high vacuum grease, you can't use just any silicone grease 
uh, want to make sure to use the high vacuum grease that uh, is designed for those cold temperatures. Uh, also included is 25 of the valve stem O-rings. The last piece included with your cylinder refill kit is this window cling here that you can stick out on, the, on your storefront and that way customers when they come by they know that you are authorized to fill the float cylinders. For those of you that are looking to become refill centers, uh, you can always give us a call to kind of go over your options, but primarily the options that you have are grabbing some scuba tanks, which generally run anywhere from $100 to $200. It's a good idea to purchase at least two scuba tanks so you're able to do a decent amount of fills before having to go get your scuba tanks refilled. Um, if you don't have the option of doing a scuba cascade system, um, you can purchase from us a SCBA adapter if you have access to an SCBA tank uh, like they have at fire departments. And uh, one of the last pieces I'd like to go over is being safe while you're doing it and making sure to have a clean workspace. Um, keeping contaminants out like hair and dirt is going to um, greatly improve the chance of you doing a good fill. All right, so that's everything you'll need to know in order to perform a fill on the BCA cylinders. Um, and any time you come across any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, reference our website, the FAQs that we have there. Generally go over most any kind of issue you might come across. But in the case that you, you need some uh, attention on the spot, you can always give us a call and uh, we'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.